the songs of insects, calls of the common crickets, grasshoppers, and cicadas of eastern United States, recorded by the Laboratory for the Study of Animal Sounds, Department of Zoology and Entomology, Ohio State University, Part 2. The songs of the longhorn grasshoppers are noise-like and not musical like those of the crickets. Their most intense frequencies are often at or beyond the upper limit of one's hearing range. As a result, the way these songs sound depends on one's hearing ability and how far he is from the insect. At close range, the lower frequencies of the song are more apparent than from a greater distance. The songs of many species are very weak, and most people can't hear them unless the insect is quite close. One of the first of the longhorn grasshoppers to sing, beginning in late June, is a short-legged shield bearer, Atlanticus testaceus. It sings a soft, high-pitched song along forest borders and in brushy pastures, usually a foot or two above the ground. In early July, one of the first of the cone-headed grasshoppers begins to sing. This is a sword-bearing conehead, Neoconocephalus ensiger, usually heard in colonies in weedy fields or marshes. Like most of the coneheads, it sings only at night. The Nebraska conehead, Neoconocephalus nebrasensis, begins singing about a week later, usually in brushy pastures or weedy areas, but sometimes from 10 or 15 feet above the ground in trees. The slightly musical conehead, Neoconocephalus exilus canoris, also sings short, coarse notes. It's usually found on weeds in wet areas. Most of the other coneheads produce loud, continuous buzzes. Among the loudest of these is a crepitating conehead, Neoconocephalus robustus crepitans, which can sometimes be heard over a quarter of a mile away. One of the most common of the false katydids is the larger angular wing katydid, Microcentrum rhombifolium, a night singer. It sings from high in trees and has two songs. One of these is a series of lisps. The other song of this species is a rapid series of loud, high-pitched ticks. The smaller angular wing katydid, Microcentrum retinervi, also a night singer in treetops, seems to echo itself. The oblong wing katydid, Amblycorypha oblongifolia, sings a loud, sharp phrase at night from high weeds, vines, and bushes.
Many of the bush katydids produce single lispy notes in the daytime, but groups of lisps at night. Here's the night song of the Texas bush katydid, Scuderia texensis. The most common and the loudest of the meadow grasshoppers is the common meadow grasshopper, or Calamum vulgari, which is generally abundant in weedy fields, pastures, and along roadsides. Like most of our meadow grasshoppers, its song is composed of both short and long notes, and is produced both day and night. Another common meadow grasshopper is a black-legged meadow grasshopper, Orchelemum nigrapes, which sings much like Orchelemum vulgare, but more rapidly and with shorter buzzes. The long-spurred meadow grasshopper, Orchelemum sylvaticum, is often found in small trees. The small meadow grasshoppers sing very softly and can seldom be heard from more than a few feet away. One of the most common of these is the woodland meadow grasshopper, Conocephalus nemeralis, a persistent singer from mid-August until frost. The straight-lanced meadow grasshopper, Conocephalus strictus is a common singer in pastures and along roadsides. Another of the small meadow grasshoppers is a short winged meadow grasshopper. Conocephalus brevipennis is found in similar places but has quite different song. The striped meta grasshopper, Conocephalus fasciatus, is common in wet grassy areas or swamps. It usually produces about a dozen zips between its long notes. Some of the short horn grasshoppers sing by rubbing their hind legs against the sides of their front wings. The sprinkled locus, Clealtus conspersa, is one of the most noticeable of these. It may be heard on the ground, in the woods, from early summer until frost. Our loudest daytime singers are the cicadas, which stop singing at dusk, about the time the katydids and the tree crickets begin. The cicadas, sometimes wrongly called locusts, produce their songs by the vibration of drum-like membranes at the base of the abdomen. Most cicadas sing from trees and begin singing about midsummer. The swamp ground cicada, Tabison chloromyra, is usually heard singing on tall weeds, especially ironweed, in low wet areas. Its song is a loud pulsating buzz, 
lasting 10 or 15 seconds. The song of the swamp ground cicada is often confused with that of a very common species, Tibison lineae, which usually sings from high in trees. The pulsations in the song of lineae are slower, and the song lasts 30 or 40 seconds. Here's the last part of a song of lineae. A cicada whose song pulsates more slowly is the bison pruinosa, sometimes called the old scissors grinder. The song of Tobias and Robinsoniana pulsates even more slowly. The songs of some cicadas are steady, without pulsations. One such song is that of Tobison Lyrison. The Songs of Insects, Calls of the Common Crickets, Grasshoppers, and Cicadas of Eastern United States, recorded by the Laboratory for the Study of Animal Sounds, Department of Zoology and Animology, Ohio State University. Part 1. During certain seasons of the year, mankind almost everywhere is subjected to a serenade of insect songs, a serenade that began millions of years before man existed. In some wooded areas in eastern United States, it sounds like this. In swampy areas, the serenade is a little different. Insect song is like a chant. It consists of a note or phrase repeated over and over again, without melody and with little or no change in pitch. Many insects synchronize their songs so that a number of individuals singing together sound like one. The song isn't made with vocal cords, like the songs we sing, or the songs of birds. It's more like instrumental music. The crickets and longhorn grasshoppers produce their songs by rubbing a sharp edge of one front wing along a file-like ridge on the underside of the other front wing, much as you might do by running your fingernail along the teeth of a comb. In most insects, the males do all the singing. The females are silent. All insects sing more slowly as the temperature drops. Here are two recordings of a well-known insect singer, the northern true katydid. Terophila camelifolia, one of the longhorn grasshoppers. The first recording was made at a temperature of 75 degrees and the second at 60 degrees. Notice a difference in tempo. 
The true katydid usually sings from the tops of tall trees, and it's one of the many insects that sing only at night. The field cricket, Akita assimilis, one of the few spring songsters of the insect world, sings on the ground both day and night, from early May until frost. Like most of the crickets, the field cricket has another, much different song, which it sings only in the presence of a female field cricket. The next cricket to add its notes to the insect serenade is a Carolina ground cricket, Nomobius carolinus, which begins in late June and may be heard until frost, usually in damp areas. It has a very rapid pulsating trill, and like all the ground crickets, sings both day and night. The striped ground cricket, Namobius fasciatus fasciatus, begins singing in early July in lawns, pastures, and along roadsides. Its trill is softer and slower and is broken at short intervals. A very similar but still slower song is sung by the tinkling ground cricket, Nomobius fasciatus tinulus, a close relative of the striped ground cricket. This insect is always found in leaf litter in dry woods. Nomobius fasciatus socius is another close relative of the striped ground cricket, but its song is completely different. These two crickets, fasciatus and socius, may be found together, but socius occurs more often in wet grassy areas, such as creek bottoms and swamps. A jerky trill is produced by the spotted ground cricket, Nomobius maculatus, which also sings in leaf litter in dry woods. A ground cricket with a very unique chirp is the confused ground cricket, Nomobius confusus, another woodland species. Late in June, the first of the tree crickets adds a clear, sweet trill to the chorus. This is Ecanthus nigricornis, called the black-horned tree cricket, 
although it's always found on coarse weeds. The four-spotted tree cricket, Ecanthus quadripunctatus, is also found on weeds, but on small, fine-stemmed weeds, or grasses. Like the black horn tree cricket, it sings both day and night. It begins in mid-July, and its song is slightly slower and lower pitched. Another tree cricket found on weeds is a broad-winged tree cricket, Ecanthus latipennis, which sings mostly at night and does not begin until late in August. Its song is the loudest of all the tree crickets. Some of the tree crickets sing in short bursts rather than in continuous trills. One such is a narrow winged tree cricket, Ecanthus angustipennis. It usually sings from high in trees. The two-spotted tree cricket, Neoxabia bipunctata, sings a higher pitch song, also from high in trees. Only one tree cricket chirps. This is a snowy tree cricket, Ecanthus nivius. It's sometimes called a temperature cricket. If you add 40 to the number of its chirps in 15 seconds, you get a close approximation of the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. The snowy tree cricket is a bush inhabitant. Frequently several individuals will be heard singing at once, their songs perfectly synchronized. One of the tiniest of the crickets is Say's bush cricket, Anaxifa exigua. It sings a very high-pitched trill. The handsome bush cricket, Philopalpus pulchellus, is well named for it's a beautiful black and red insect. It sings a creaky, sputtery trill from bushes and large weeds. The jumping bush cricket, Arachara saltator, is a late singer, beginning in mid-August. Its song is a clear piping chirp.
The base of the singing insects is a mole cricket, Grillatapa hexadactyla, which sings its low-pitched song in the entrance of its burrows in swampy areas or along marshy streams.